Alrighty, I, we're not going to do a fan art section for this one because YouTube videos, uh, interview stuff usually tends to go really, really long without the extra padding of the fan art section. So, yeah, that's a thing we're going to be doing. Uh, but let me go ahead and introduce the guest that we're going to have on today. Uh, for those who do not know, uh, this is Kay, and she actually is the person who, uh, if you guys remember Miss Peep, uh, and if you don't, then there are plenty of episodes on my channel where you can find stuff from Miss Peep. We've had a couple of collabs in the past, uh, but Kay is actually uh, the voice trainer for Miss Peep uh, for voice feminization. So I wanted to actually have her on so that we could have a conversation about voice feminization and how that tends to go. Because I know for a lot of people uh, who are trans, they don't tend to know the path forward outside of like uh, I'm going to I'm going to soften my vocal cords and see about getting uh, a diagnosis and also get on HRT. Maybe if they're in a position where they can even afford to do so. Those are the things that most people know. But I know that like finding uh, voice training is a difficult thing in general. And this goes for anything, whether it be for music or whether it be for uh, trans issues. It, it That's generally a hard enough thing to find in any case. So, yeah, is Miss Peep okay, as far as I know? Uh, yeah, I talk to Miss Peep all the time. She should be all right. She's uh, been busy with some stuff, so. Yeah. But, uh, Kay, would you like to introduce yourself, maybe give any more information uh, than I just gave right there? Uh, sure. Um, uh, my name's Kayla. I, like Sir said, I teach Miss Peep voice feminization. Uh, my actual job is I've been an illustrator for a long time, so uh, there's that. But on the side, for free, <laughs> actually, I don't charge anyone. I teach voice feminization. Awesome, awesome. Well, that is, I know that that's uh, probably a thing, especially if you start getting a bunch of DMs in your <laughs> inbox. You might oh, have God. to change, you might have to change policy on that a little bit. Um, maybe, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Said, could you turn her oh, up a little? Quiet. I'm sorry. I can do that. Hold on. Let me go ahead and beep, 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 beep. All right. There we go. Let's try that. Also, Zozo, thank you very much for resubscribing. I appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Softly says this combo is not helpful to me. I'm trying to go the opposite way, uh, but I will stay actually, and listen to me. <laughs> Mr. Softly, uh, I actually have some information for you if you do want to stick around and listen. I mean, it, they're, they're, they're going to be sticking around and listening anyway. Hell yeah. Uh, but with that said, I think that the first question that we probably need to go into is what is voice feminization? Because, I mean, on the on the surface, it sounds pretty self-explanatory. Uh, take your, your voice right now, which might sound mask, and make it sound more femme. That's, but I know that you could probably provide a more technical answer to that. Uh, yeah, so voice feminization is technically any action you take to change like the perception of your voice in a social cue situation where your voice will gender you. Um, it's There's a lot of different ways to do it. There's surgeries, which I highly do not recommend. Uh, we've I've, I've seen too many horror stories with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's multiple methods there's lots of ways to train um and you know there's a few methods that are like really common that a lot of people you know uh how do i say it a lot of people like have success with more than others but uh, you, you just gotta mostly practice at it i think anyone can do it especially if you uh actually hear my voice before i feminize <laughs> but uh Anyway, yeah, no, it's um, it's 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 a lot easier than people think, um, and all it is is just changing perception of things, really. Okay, uh, a couple things here, real quick. Uh, I not keep reading. Thank you for the twenty-five bits. The gay agenda. <laughs> Thank you for resubscribing. Um, nah, this is the K agenda right now. I didn't even ask for pronouns, but I guess we'll just assume the K <laughs> the K the K agenda. <laughs> <laughs> but so the next question that generally comes up when we're talking about that um you mentioned surgeries before i know that uh what what 
I don't want to make this all gloom and doom, uh, but you did mention that surgeries were a thing that some people did to try to, I guess, reshape uh, their voice box. And there are some fairly negative effects that can come from that, from what you're saying. Uh, yes, the surgeries. Oh, my goodness. So it's a really, really delicate process. And uh, your vocal folds, uh, which are what actually produces the sound for your voice, are not really easy to mess with so if there's any kind of slip up there's all kinds of things that can go wrong and um during recovery even like a simple cough can ruin it forever and you might just like be mute so there's there's those um i have heard technically that it's improved but i have yet to see any results of it being improved so i just can't recommend Vocal surgeries. It feels like uh, one of those things that if you can, if you can, if you can train and achieve a similar or, or even in, a similar and safer result, uh, maybe go ahead and, and go with the similar and safer result. Oh, yeah. And um, on that specific note, I do believe anyone can train because, like I said, if you hear my voice before I feminize, it's pretty crazy. So, so because it's, since I've trained, you know, I can still do this and go all the way down here. Oh, and God, it's solid snake. <laughs> right. That's what I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> that's uh, that's what I got called a lot before. So. Mm -hmm. So that does beg the next question, though, if we're on the topic of harm, um, is there any chance that voice feminization can harm or permanently alter your original voice? Now, granted, understandably, permanently altering your original voice for a lot of people is probably the goal. That's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> um, but I, ha I do know that when you do vocal training for singing, uh, you actually can harm your vocal cords doing that. I'd imagine that there is a risk involved if you don't have professional help with voice feminization uh, as well, because all the same mechanics are involved. Uh, yes, actually. So uh, you can hurt your voice, but you can also hurt your voice just by talking normally. <laughs> uh, the primary ways that voices can be hurt are through overuse, through misuse, and through abuse. So overuse is just talking for really long periods of time all the time. You might want to be concerned about that one, Cyrus. <laughs> just take care of your voice. That's all I got to say. Uh, <laughs> misuse is when you're talking in like weird registers all the time a lot of like lower sounds um i've heard of like one case of like someone doing falsetto too often and it fucked something up but in terms of actual um feminization like that in and of itself won't really hurt you as long as you don't overdo anything just you know if anything ever hurts in your voice just stop practicing for the day drink plenty of water and uh you know Warm-ups are always good. Warm-ups will always be good. Yeah. Felicia Angel, thank you for the thousand bits. Hirsch Rodinger, thank you for the hundred bits as well. So I, I I bring that up because I know that there are some people who are what's the best way to put this? Um hyper apologists for trans issues and then will ignore that there are risks involved when you don't do things in their proper order when you don't do things in a way that's responsible. And I know that there are people who I've spoken to who deal with so much dysphoria, not that all trans people are dysphoric, but who deal with enough of it where they would potentially harm their voice in an effort to feminize faster or to change yeah. their voice faster. And yeah, that's overdoing is bad. <laughs> I want, I, I just want it to be clear that like, do not harm yourself. I understand uh, dysphoria is a thing and it's very uncomfortable to deal with, but also don't push yourself in a direction so fast that you will cause yourself pain. Um, or again, even permanent dam uh, damage. Yeah, Axelotl for Dream, thank you for redeeming your no, for like, oh, no, you fucking degenerate. It's pretty easy to tell if you're overdoing it. Um, just if your voice feels tired or if anything hurts, just stop and you'll be fine. Um, just keep in mind that hydration is really important, especially for anything to do with the voice, like all the time. It doesn't matter like what you're trying to do. If you're trying to learn to sing, if you're just trying to be a better public speaker, anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, just take care of it. Hydrate, do warm ups, uh, try to reduce yelling, just all those kinds of things like that are 
pretty like pretty clear but um it definitely does help to have a one-on-one -on -one trainer or even a you know even a group trainer would be fine mm -hmm. um just to make sure people don't like go too far with things because i've taught a lot of people <laughs> who uh either there's there's the two types of dysphoria that i see a lot <laughs> um the uh the ones who have dysphoria so much that they can't practice because it gives them more dysphoria or the people who have so much dysphoria that they want to practice too much i've seen i've seen both mm -hmm. you get the you get the anxiety from it as well yeah, as absolutely. the uh as well as the it, it's like when you're it's like when you're an athlete and you're trying to push yourself harder and harder and your trainer's like literally sitting you down going okay you need you need to quit it's time to throw in the towel yeah. for the day. It's time to, it's time to go stop. drink. Are going to fall off. Equinox V, thank you very much for hopping in. Uh, so that does bring us to the next thing. I just, out of curiosity, what do voice feminization exercises generally look like? Could we go through a couple of those just so people who are thinking about maybe getting a personal trainer to do stuff like this will know kind of what it looks like, kind of what this would entail? Yeah, uh, so there's a lot of different things, um, a lot of different approaches. The primary one that has the greatest effect on the voice is something just called laryngeal control, because uh, the concept behind voice feminization is to make the vocal tract smaller. Um, and all that really involves is taking your larynx, which is, you know, the a bunch of tissue and, and and stuff that the it's a bone i think yeah it's a bone but um taking that bone which holds the vocal folds inside it and moving it up so that the distance between it and your lips is shorter mm -hmm. so that one you can actually do without making any sound which is really nice in order to you know practice without letting people know if that's something you're concerned about or even practicing at work when you need to or like all kinds of things um so there's a bunch of ways to do that usually that's actually most people's hurdle mm -hmm. that i notice a lot of people have trouble getting over that specifically like feeling out how to actually like exercise that bone uh get getting control of those muscles because those aren't muscles you use voluntarily normally yeah i think um you, you use them all the time but doing it voluntary is a different story so. so i do i do singing lessons uh with another uh, uh another streamer yeah, uh, Evie LaBelle. and one of the things that evie does when when they teach is to explain things that you would normally like that you normally know how to do and then say then uh they'll go okay now do that but while singing. So the example for me was um, it was hard for me to like dig down and open up my larynx enough uh, to not sound like I was uh, singing through my nose. So uh -huh. they were like, OK, so what you need to do is yawn, yawn. That actual like motion will open up your larynx and then your voice sounds like this because you're digging, uh, you're digging deep into there. Yes. So correct. same, so, pretty much the same um, exact concept I'm imagining. Uh, the actual main uh, thing that usually people catch on to the quickest is to just swallow and you can feel your larynx move up your Adam's apple for those people who don't know what a larynx is um, you can feel it move up and then just hold it there and then eventually like practicing that and doing it over and over again you can kind of get a hold of it uh, there's also like a, a gargling method there's there, there's a whole bunch of ways to do it but um Usually so, the swallowing method is the one that people catch on to most. So if I were to take my normal voice and cadence, which is like this, and then adjust the muscles like so, then we'd get a voice that sounds a little more like this. Yes. So you'll get that and you could actually, uh, it, you'll, you'll need to move it higher if you want to like totally feminize it. Yeah. But that is a step in the correct direction. Yes. Which is why we'd have to go a little more like I'd have to, I'd have to change more than just the way the muscles are going at that point um yeah at least for at least for me so i know that like and and this it hopefully to maybe make this to where the the conversation isn't a turn off to people who are not interested in trans issues because there are people who are like well this conversation is not for me i don't care about this um i actually 
do know of a scenario where you would want to learn voice feminization, even if you are not trans, even if you have no uh, no interest, no, nothing in that category. Voice acting in general. Um, for voice instance, in general, as, like especially D&D. &D. Biggest one. <laughs> I a lot. I'd say the biggest one, maybe not the, the biggest use case, but the biggest one that I can tell would be uh, audiobook reading. Uh, typically, most audiobooks are read by a single person. And if that single person is masculine, they have to be able to dip into a feminine voice when they're talking through a feminine person. Um, likewise, when there is a feminine voice actor, they typically have to dip into a very masculine part of their voice when they are talking through a masculine person. And I'd imagine that it's the you're it's the same thing mechanically. The difference is, is that you're not trying to make it a habit at that point. You're just trying to make it a, a thing in your toolbox. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, a lot of those times when you see that in audiobooks, it's very, very acted, very exaggerated. Um, when you are practicing, you know, for the purpose of, you know, transitioning, you typically want it to sound as natural as possible. But yeah, absolutely. It's super useful for for all kinds of things. Audiobook reading is is definitely a big one. D D is the most common one I've seen. They want to, you know, mm -hmm. play a, a female character and they want to use a voice for it. And you know, it's it's great. But, or you're the or you're the DM and you happen to have a bunch of NPCs that are all of various yeah. genders and you're trying to you're like, okay, I gotta slip into this voice for this one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I do that all the time. I DM uh well I haven't recently in a while, but yeah, I used to DM all the time and I'd flip flop back and forth, you know. Gotcha. Um, Zemke, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. Thank you for gifting that. So That's my girlfriend. Hey Zemi. Awesome. <laughs> so what if uh moving around on the list here real quick, um what if someone has damaged vocal cords already? Maybe they took singing lessons and went too far or they had like an accident and they've got damaged vocal cords because of something physical that happened. Um, what, how safe is it for someone like that to practice uh, maskifying or feminizing their voice? Uh, are there exercises they can use to kind of uh, push themselves through that? Or is that just like, there is now a big risk factor involved here. Tread very, very lightly. Um, it really depends on like the extent of the damage. For anything really severe, uh, you're definitely going to want to see an SLP first, a speech and language pathologist. Um, but if it's just like, oh, it's da like damaged, and you know you have kind of a more raspy voice now, or any other things that cause you know general fatigue or or those kind of things, then you can push through it doesn't really matter you just have to be careful with how how long you practice and and uh if anything hurts like i said previously just you know stop and try again later like right. it's totally possible to do even if with damage and <laughs> it's kind of interesting because i have actually seen many many people use it as an excuse and not be honest about it i'm not you know trying to call anyone out but like I've seen two that I can think of off the top of my head who are like, oh, my vo vocal cords are damaged. I can't speak. And they were just saying that so they didn't have to speak. <laughs> and their voice wasn't actually damaged at all. But, uh, uh, that's off track, but it was interesting. I, I've i met a handful of people, not to like accidentally slip into ableism live on stream with viewers, uh, but I, I yeah. have met at least at least one person in my life who used a disability oh, no, that they they did not have uh, as an excuse to not have to do things they otherwise found uncomfortable like i've i've, I've been there and seen that so i know it happens uh, it's unfortunate that it happens because nine times out of ten i think it just comes down to a, a type of anxiety like you're just trying to find the oh, way sure. the way to avoid doing something that you otherwise would have to do and like I yeah, get the that anxiety is especially like piling that on top of dysphoria like when it comes to like practicing this kind of stuff I absolutely understand I'm just like anyone can do it I promise just just uh, take care of your voice and, and practice you'll be all right so what would you say are the benefits to training with a bespoke tutor versus say somebody training alone using uh, like a YouTube series or using uh, just 
things that have been recorded by a professional for them to do their exercises, like learn them through that. What are the benefits of having a bespoke tutor versus going through one of those programs? Um, having a one-on-one -on -one tutor has quite a few benefits. Uh, mostly, like the one is just having them being able to, you know, listen to you and Sam, you thank tell you, you oh, that for doesn't now. sound oh, quite natural. Oh, yeah. Probably try this, or you know, just live one-on-one -on -one in time, like in real time, being able to tell you like these things are the one of the things you're gonna change. This is how you change them. This is what you want to do. Um, YouTube series can absolutely be great, but if you're going to use those, you definitely want to record yourself. You want to use the voice with other people who you trust and, you know, have them tell you like, oh, you know, this sounds a little off. I'm not sure that I would like be convinced, I guess that that's a bad way to put it, but that's the, uh, the, in general, like having a live tutor, you can fix things more quickly. They, if you're, they like, will know like what to do to, to change the bad habits. I guess it's like if uh, if if you're doing voice feminization because your goal is to pass in stealth, like that's that's what you are trying to do, then uh -huh. sending sending the voice to somebody else for them to listen to and go like, what do you hear, is uh, is is helpful at that point. Obviously, like passing and and being able to stealth in society that does not necessarily in like. Inability to do that does not invalidate being trans, obviously. But, I, but I do know for a I lot of people, of passing. yeah, it. I do know for a lot of people, it helps put dysphoria to rest when they're like, okay, yeah, I definitely. can, like, I can go out into a bar and you know get get hit on by a person without feeling like I, like without the imposter syndrome setting in. Um, uh -huh. So. I know that that's a uh, that's a, a conversation I've had with a couple of my friends who are trans. They're just like, "Hey, I was able to go out today, and this person complimented me, and they said, ma'am. and I thought that that like it just, that's like the the brightest part of their day was just yeah. that happening. Uh, yeah. and it, voice is a big thing when it comes to passing; like, it's huge. It, it can literally mean the diff the the entire difference sometimes because mm -hmm. you can get to like an andro state, and if you can you know sound feminine, then you are going to get gendered as female. Yeah, like, that's you know you only have to go like half as far you know appearance wise yeah because if you can if, if you can hear it like that's that's most of the work right there not uh, obviously part of it is if you're a discord icon uh talking to people online that's like all they get is your voice and then when you're yeah, the, it's it when you're out in re when you're when you're out in the real world Everybody at one point has has probably seen a uh, a person who was androgynous and they were waiting for them to speak before they gendered them like uh, I've I've seen that happen. I know it's happened to me uh, where I've like gone. OK, I'm going to wait for them to talk and then then I'll say something like you wait for the voice. The voice is a big part of that. A lot of us use that as a a lot of us use that as a guidepost, whether we know it or not. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before we move on from that, I wanted to to answer Taproot there. Phone mics are absolutely fine. Um, the better the mic, the the easier you know time you'll have hearing like the little nuances. But for just general like feminization, um, phone mics are plenty. You just have to hear like a general overview of your voice and be able to tell. Also, uh, Zemke and Epentos, thank you both for following. I appreciate it. So. I, I will I will piggyback on the phone mic thing real quick. Um, you would be surprised if you were in a noise isolated environment, the actual quality your phone mic has, not the mic you use with like your AirPods or you know any of those, but like the actual microphone that's in your phone. Smartphone mics outside of having a good recording environment, which a closet is great for that. Not that I'm saying go be trans in the closet. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but recording off of a phone mic while in a closet where your voice has nowhere to reverb, you'll be surprised at the audio quality that comes out of those things. Nine times out of 10. Yeah, absolutely. As as an audiophile, I would absolutely say not. But um, as far as a layman's audio quality i would agree this is uh for for those who don't know um my my friend uh gilly the kid is also 
uh, quite the audio file. So when we have conversations about, say, like the Blue Yeti microphone, um, there's a there's there's a set there's a set of things that I'm looking for and a set of things that he's looking for and they are very different. <laughs> for me, very, I'm like, does the voice sound clean? Does it sound crisp? Can you listen to it? Is there enough bass in here? The Blue Yeti can do most of that with a little bit of tweaking, and he's just like, nope, it's all garbage. It's all trash. Get get yeah, a, get a sure weird. SMB or fuck off. <laughs> I'm just like, oh okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> um. Jeebus. Uh, so Discord th- fucks up everything anyway. Di- well, yeah, but that comes down to Discord. Discord has a, a bandwidth cap. Yeah, yeah, it's since unlike Skype and Zoom, since Discord is trying to be a an app for gamers, yeah. it cuts <laughs> bandwidth use down as far as it can go. Which is helpful. Yeah. I will not deny that. It is, it is very helpful for gaming. It is less than helpful for uh, for recording. Uh, Mr. Shopley says uh, Blue Yeti suck ass and are shit for their price point. Oh yeah, for the for the <laughs> for the price point of the Blue Yeti, um, I I would rather get a Blue Yeti Snowball. Like the only difference between the Blue Yeti and the Snowball to me is just there's a little bit more tin in the Snowball, but you pay fifty to sixty bucks less. That that's you can worth also it to just me. Use post processing to fix the Snowball. <laughs> yeah, and like but also like Fi Fine makes really good microphones for a much oh, lower I find for how cheap they are. They do. They do an amazing job for, you know, what what you get there. Um, and if you're if you're spending Blue Yeti money, just go with Elgato instead and get a, one of the Wave series. It's better than the Blue Yetis. I think I think the Waves are better than the Yetis personally. Yeah, I'd agree. The only the only problem I have with the waves is the actual material build for the waves is kind of cheap compared to what the Yeti uses, but the sound is better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that's uh, that's all USB mics, and I think those are all considered uh, some form of disease Bad. to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please XLR. Only if you're willing to get a ghost and a pass through. <laughs> Um, Judy the Pancake, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, Mint Kuro has a question. 4K, are you mainly for pitch and stuff? Or are you good at helping with more refinement stuff like adjusting resonance? That is a wonderful question, actually. Um, pitch means almost nothing in voice feminization. So I don't, I do help with pitch control, which can help you with vocal patterns. But as far as resonance that's the primary thing that's going to make the most difference in a voice um so lowering amount of resonance and increasing voice softness not too far to you know to a natural point are the two things that will help the most in voice feminization but pitch really doesn't mean much people used to think all the time even trainers used to think all the time that pitch was like the primary thing but it's it's pretty meaningless it it can help in some ways and you can raise your pitch to the level that you like that's fine but like as far as like the actual uh usefulness of pitch in feminizing your voice is not useful i guess it it also like all things considered think about a a smooth seductress voice you're not thinking of a high-pitched voice but you're still thinking of a feminine voice that alone should probably be enough to not think that pitch is the, uh, the end all be all there. Absolutely. There are plenty of like cis men who have really masculine voices, but then you'll find cis women who have deeper, but still very feminine voices in comparison. Like it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, yeah, every, it's pretty useless. everybody's pointing itself. out it's, it's our, our voice levels. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, what's trained you so your RRR can be really convincing <laughs> said what's trained me or let's train no, me so it can let's be train you <laughs> yeah sure why not <laughs> <laughs> um, Judy the Pancake says you're an awesome VTuber anyway great for background noise well thank you very very much I am a I've, I've noticed a lot of people say that I'm I'm a decent back bit of background noise yay I said Fem Cirrus when J- Supa I'm right here <laughs> what do you call these? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Salem did mean, uh, Salem was the voice. surgeon for this one. <laughs> 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 what was that, Kay? 
I said, I think they mean your voice. Oh, I know they mean my voice, but I'm giving them shit. <laughs> the girl butter That's dispensers. Funny. The girl butter discourse is over. We're done. <laughs> oh, my God. Like Evelyn from League of Legends, she has a, a deep voice. Well, yeah, Evelyn's entire aesthetic in League of Legends is seductress who will kill you in front of your family because she gets a high off of it. Like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so, next question would be, what, what do you do if somebody does harm their voice while they are practicing uh, vocal feminization? Um, and, like, obviously there's levels of harm here, so, you know, for... I'm guessing the obvious answer is like if there's a little bit of harm, then you just tell them like, hey, take a drink of water. You're done for the day. But what if there's yeah. harder damage that's done there? Um, unfortunately, most of the time, if there's really hard damage, just using your voice as little as possible is the only thing you can really do for free. Um, you need to rest it up. You need to make sure you drink plenty of water. Hydration is, again, really important. Um, as far as really bad damage, speech and language pathologists are kind of your only option, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's pretty rough. Damaging your voice is scary. <laughs> so take care of it the best you can, everyone, whether you're training for something or not. Give me one second. I just letting uh, Judy know if you if you need stuff for VTubing, uh, if you're asking questions like that, then just send them to me in a DM. My DMs are always open. Uh, I can I can help with that, but not during middle of stream. Um, so question is, well, actually, there's really I, I, I don't even need to ask this question. That's question I had was, is it better to learn feminization through intensive practice or steadily one lesson at a time? But through all of the conversation we've had so far, that's almost a useless question at this point. The answer is yeah, obviously it, steadily. It's steadily. Um, it's interesting. So I have had a few students, um, only one that I can think of off the top of my head, but there may have been another one who literally figured it out within one lesson. Um, everybody's voice is different, uh, but this person, you know, one lesson, I explained the things to them. They just instantly clicked with it. They understood how it worked and they were feminine and all it took was just them maintaining it and you know they were good to go so it, it's different for everyone but definitely steadily if you don't get it quickly um just have patience uh move forward everything's good and then i guess the uh we can we can move on from that i this one's probably gonna vary for everybody but how long does practice usually look like you mentioned that for you know, one person, it was uh, just a single lesson, but I'm imagining for others, uh, it was a bit more than that. Also, before before you answer, Super Vaporeon did drop a uh, did drop a thousand points in there. So uh, you fucking degenerate. Anyway, continue. Uh, yeah. So um, as far as like the average amount of time for my teaching is this could be totally different because I'm not I don't teach a ton, a ton of people. Mm -hmm. um, but average, I see typically about three months. Uh, I've seen as long as like eight months and I've seen even longer than that, like really rarely, but typically about three months of, of weekly lessons and usually it's pretty good. And as long as they're keeping up with their practice, you know, like about 15 minutes a day, um, taking it easy, just keeping things in mind. It's, it's, it's a lot easier than people think. And it's just a matter of, of you know, practicing properly. I mean, realistically, once you've got a voice cadence down, practicing properly is probably just the same as touching just grass, talking. right? Uh, yeah, like you just, you just go out and do it. <laughs> yeah, when no, once you've got it down, and when you once you understand it, you just use the voice. That's how you practice. <laughs> like, um, it's it's just a matter of getting to the point where you know you like the voice that you're making. You know. So uh, we did have another question in here from uh, Nijikawa Sataki. Uh, for K, sorry to intrude, but besides transitioning and voice acting, is there any other usages for voice feminization? I feel like we kind of covered this earlier when talking about, like, audiobooks and characters in D&D &D and stuff like that. Uh, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, this is kind of backwards, I guess, but the, <laughs> I've seen instances of where people learn it, because I, I only teach, you know, 
trans people or gender non-conforming and, and stuff like that for free typically. Uh, I've made exceptions sometimes, but but I have seen people specifically learn it so that they can use it on the phone to take advantage of weird situations. Like this is a reverse situation, but there have been times where I've been on phone with like a customer service thing and they're like giving me the runaround and I'll like pretend to call someone over and I'll switch voices and talk to them. And they take me more seriously. Misogyny is real, but anyway. Jesus. So what, <laughs> yeah. what kind of history does like what kind of history is there for this particular field? I know for every for every type of study, there's always an interesting history to it, even if that history is somewhat dark, like something like psychology. Um, but I also imagine for something like this, there's probably two different types of history, a history of it utilized inside trans circles and then a history of it utilized outside of trans circles. So what what kind of info would you maybe have on that? Um, I don't truthfully have a ton of information on the uh um on the uh like his history like in depth of anything but the things that i could imagine happening is you know back in the day uh, plays were put on primarily by you know male actors i can imagine it was used then um and i, I know a little bit about that one but i i can tell you uh the the, the workaround for that wasn't training most of the time the work, oh, really? the, work yeah, I'm not sure. the, the work around for that was uh you had a career path set in front of you that said that you were going to be uh a minstrel you were going to uh speak in a very very low uh, a very very soft cadence for life to be an actor a, a thespian uh which meant oh, you goodness, that sounds awful <laughs> uh, which meant um they cut off your balls Ooh, yikes. That way I already did that one. Yeah. They 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 would do that so <sighs> that when you were going up on stage as you as you would grow up, your body would not produce uh as much testosterone and therefore you would not go through a male puberty. Um it it kind of, fun aside, it's very weird to me that we've been practicing puberty blocking uh for so long and yet <laughs> there are still people. <laughs> <laughs> angry about the <laughs> practice and we have oh a much God. less brutal version of it now uh, you're so correct it's painful but i uh yeah that was yeah i was done with the choirs too yeah i was done with if you if you were going to be singing in Yikes. the choir um yeah it was uh and it was it was for the choir at least it was a double-ended thing it was like oh well you get to be a person of god uh because you know you're not <laughs> you're not gonna be you're not gonna be running around uh looking for a, a partner at this point in the same way that you otherwise would and uh also you know, we get we get we get a voice out of this so you know benefits oh my said people were okay with this absolutely it was considered uh, it was just considered part and parcel uh to those careers like they lived you, in a society yeah they they did live in a society <laughs> In the 1980s, you threw the Joker into a vat of acid to change him, but now all you do is you throw him <laughs> into society. It's, I'm, I'm going to go Kermit alive. And... Oh my goodness. Uh, but, so yeah, no, I, 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 I did know a little bit of that history one because uh, I took a Renaissance history uh stream when i was at brown barge and that was one of the things they talked about and i was in uh sixth grade when i learned oh that and i was like <laughs> oh my god i'm so glad i didn't want to be an actor at that point in time <laughs> <laughs> absolutely oh my god yeah no, i learned something thank you um so are there any experiences you'd like to share you've had with your students like they can be good or bad but obviously good ones people prefer to hear um and it it would be less like calling people out at that point uh but yeah what Absolutely. kind of what kind of experiences have you had with your students that you'd like to share uh, my favorite is always when they you know finally get that click and they finally you know get over that hump of where they get stuck usually like i said it's the the laryngeal control and they like say oh my god somebody gendered me properly on the phone and it, it that's like my favorite thing but uh i've had like i said earlier i had the one where the the girl got it in a day that was incredible but just to add in you know a bad experience to offset that just a little bit will make people sad is the worst part is when people just quit mm -hmm. um, they hit that hump 
And no matter how much I tried to encourage and to say, hey, you know, you can get this. Let's just try a different method. They just stop. And and I, I, don't, I don't like that. So my advice to people is don't stop. You can do it. I promise. It's not as hard as you think. Um, and just you will hit that point where you're going to get gendered properly on the phone and it's going to feel good. I promise it'll be amazing. I know that uh, that kind of that kind of dials back to a, a thing we had mentioned earlier is that that's uh, while passing is not necessary for being trans in any way, shape or form, there is definitely that that aspect of like, oh, my God, it made my day when uh, insert gender thing here. Uh, so there's that uh, codename Gamma said I basically stopped. I couldn't afford it and just fell back on practicing. I feel like I'm not going anywhere. Plus, I want to sing and I don't know if that's going to be possible. Oh, it's absolutely possible to sing. It's a whole different set of lessons. That is definitely more difficult. Don't get me wrong on that one, but it is possible. Um, I've seen it happen. I've seen people have amazing singing voice. If you want to see an example, there's a Oh, what's her name on YouTube? I think it's Claire Michelle. Mm. She has fantastic music. Trans, never had any vocal surgeries. She makes great music, wonderful singing voice. She might even have a tutorial somewhere on her channel. Um, but yeah, no, I, I understand it gets frustrating when you feel like you're not going anywhere. But if you buckle down and just try different methods, you can get a 100% codename. So... I guess uh, a, a takeaway from this would be, are your DMs open for anybody who is, is wanting to reach out to you and, and get advice for this? Oh boy. Um, yeah, I can I can try. Uh, I, I'll apologize if I don't get to everyone, but if, if people want to DM me on Twitter, that's fine. Uh, don't follow me there. That account is just, it's just my personal account. All you'll see is me being angry. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> If you do want some stuff in the future, I do plan on doing some some actual like content creation with Miss Peep. So you could follow her and you'll eventually see where things come from me. But it'll As also be Miss Peep I... talking about things that makes her angry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but um anyway, so the um when I'm doing when we're doing that, as I said, I'm an illustrator. I am planning on actually writing a, tr a comic about uh, trans issues. Okay. It, if you can't tell by my little icon on screen, it'll be furry stuff, but it's not going to be like anything explicit. There will probably be an explicit version, but it'll be, it'll be safe for work. Uh, um, some people are asking, I can, I can, I can I'll drop a link here real quick. Okay. Yeah. Great. Go ahead. Yep. It's, it's not interesting. Uh, <laughs> K Fox at K Fox 35 with two X's. That's me. Um, said half of this audience is furry as fuck. Yes. <laughs> I did. Okay. So I had, I had 300 subscribers when telltale shouted me out years ago. And then I had 700 subscribers cause 400 people came from his channel and uh, bless Owen's heart. Every single goddamn person he sent me was a furry. At that point, the 50-50 split between furry and not furry in my community began, and it's never changed. It's never Fantastic. changed. <laughs> that, that That's really funny. The furries and the not furries in my audience have been sitting there just like having a conversation with Thanos. How do we achieve true balance, sir? <laughs> this entire well. time. As far as my comic goes, I picked furry stuff specifically so I could illustrate certain concepts without using nudity. So I have a reason. Yeah, that makes sense. B Bugs Bunny wearing gloves and all that. <laughs> Bugs Bunny wearing... No, actually, the concept for a little spoiler, um, the main character, the trans the trans woman in the, in, the, in the game, what am I saying? In the comic is a deer. She likes her antlers. But, you know, female deer, ah. at least white-tailed deer, don't have antlers. So she's going to keep them anyway. And it's, it's just, you don't have to do all of the things to, to be trans. You can just do what you feel like. Do it. Do what works best She for wants you. to be a doe that can gore you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, 
Bacon, uh, Bacon was unavailable, says Telltale is a furry confirmed. Can confirm that while he himself may not be a furry, I was sitting at a, a table for lunch uh, with a bunch of other content creators. And when Telltale arrived, Matt Dillahunty looked at Owen and, and just the first things out of his mouth was, oh, good, the furry is here. <laughs> and that was that was the first things out of his mouth to Telltale. So even if Telltale is not a furry, everyone believes Telltale is a furry. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good old Owen. Um, so just can, can confirm from personal life, real life experiences. Um, Fantastic. So to wrap things up, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share uh, with any of the viewers here? Anybody who's watching live or anybody who might be watching when this goes up on YouTube? Yes. Um it's hard being trans right now. It really is. Uh, seems like everything's coming down on top of us. Laws are being passed. You know, uh, tons of other terrible issues are happening. But I firmly, firmly believe that this is the dark before the dawn. You know, once if we fight back, if we stand up, keep going, we can push things back, and we will actually have genuine acceptance things will go properly society always moves left we can win vote and follow Cirrus and miss peep that is the most important part of any revolution is following me and miss peep <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm kidding obviously because i know i know that there's somebody in my audience who's going to take that seriously and go like you're right i can't throw a brick through a window without first following on youtube or something <laughs> Like don't do do not do do not do, but um, oh my goodness! I do want to say, uh, Kay, thank you very much for hopping on. I know that our our initial interaction uh, was from a a statement that I said that was misheard, not just by you, but like a, a few yeah, other I know, people. I totally misunderstood that. Um, so the the history of that for people who were in the chat, there was a a a thing that I was pointing out uh, was that a lot of times uh, it is it is harder. Uh, obviously, you know, there are issues with the idea of passing in the trans community in general, but it is harder sometimes to pass if you're AMAB as opposed to AFAB because of things like your Adam's apple. And the way that I the way that I, I phrased it was it's harder to train your voice. I think it was like um, shaving your Adam's apple doesn't always uh, go far enough or is even possible for all people. And then I like I immediately bled into and sometimes training your voice uh, will not necessarily let you go as far as you want to go, uh, depending on how you do it. And like I said, those two things close enough together that it sounded like I meant to say uh, that the Adam's apple had something to do like the Adam's apple shaving has something to do with the effect on the voice. Yeah, I was like, what? No, serious. It's wrong. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, like the. I was take I was trying to point out uh, physical modifications and then vocal modifications in two separate categories, but I said them so close to one another, it it farked up there. Um, we good. We got it fixed. Though obviously uh, there are physical modifications that can affect vocal, uh, but as we talked about earlier in this segment, uh, those, those ones, <laughs> yeah, those ones are a bit a bit scary. If you. Uh, I, I, I hate to say it this way. This is going to sound very awkward the way it's going to come out, but uh, I have all the best intentions when I say if you're going to do a vocal surgery like that, um, learn ASL beforehand just in case. There is a oh, there is a chance of things going it, wrong. Yes. Well, it's just like if you if you have a spinal surgery, right? Like have a, have a fund for a wheelchair set up there is a like all surgeries have a chance of something going wrong prep for the the possibility of the bad thing happening and then be happy if they don't be be very comfortable if they don't but understand that like no surgeries without risk hope for the best prepare for the worst yep uh avalon of avalon says what pain for, do you have for us today oh the pain is later right now we're actually just enjoying good vibes um yeah, i'm great i'm kidding <laughs> Kind of says my last resort is vocal surgery. I don't know if I'm going to get to that point. Let's 
try to do everything possible before getting to that point, because that's the one that has the highest risk factor. So let's not do the high risk factors. High risk factors, bad. Uh, that said, though, okay, I did want to thank you for hopping on and lending your time to talk about this issue, because I'm... I know bits and pieces of this, but most of my knowledge is from talking with people, talking with friends of mine who are trans, not from talking with somebody who actually uh, does the vocal instruction themselves. It's a very different experience. Yeah, I'm glad to help. Awesome. And then um, do you want... Uh, are, I know we already mentioned your your Twitter before. Uh, that is uh, Fox, Miss Fox with two X's and then 35 at the end, I believe. K Fox. With K two Fox. X's. I'm going to fix the, the can't message part. I just saw that in chat. Uh... Yeah. Um, is there anywhere else that you want people to be able to find you? I know that you said that you are going to be uh, doing some content creation later. Do you have anything for that already set up? Uh, nothing yet. Um, but if you if you do follow Miss Peep, you'll 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 see that in the future. We're, we'll be doing it together. OK, so go follow Miss Peep on Twitter and then that will absolutely that will give you an avenue in the future. It's like a cheat code. Yeah, there we go. Well, again, thank you very much for hopping on. And I'm going to go ahead and Anytime. close us out for this bit before moving into everything else. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you very I'll much. Stick around. Yep. Bye. See ya.